the sustainability of high cost land based interventions such as watershed development has always been a challenge active involvement of the primary stakeholders the land owners and the watershed dwellers holds the key to its success designing and implementing the project using the gross planning method while being scientifically accurate has not always brought in the expected results the reason is that every land owner did not always concur with the proposals made by the engineer during the implementation of the project this often stalled the progress of the project the watershed organization trust and its partner ngos in the indo german watershed development program through trial and error introduced the participatory net planning method way back in 1995 साहेबा संघ बोलाव लागे साहेब आमचे असे चढे तिथं उतार उतारामध्ये घाला ओढलं गेलं पाहिजे आणि तशा पद्धतीने आमचे बांध टाकून घेणार त्यांच्या सा मंजूर आखून असं पद्धतीने सांगून घेणार साहेबाला असं सिस्टम सेट टू इनकॉर्पोरेट कस्टम मेड टेक्निकल ट्रीटमेंट्स एज वेल एज फायनान्शियल प्लान्स In participatory net planning or PNP the planning team consisting of the engineer and watershed committee members together with the adult members of the farmer household study the plot of land from all aspects including that of proposed land use after treatment they discuss and agree on the proposed treatment and accordingly the plan and budget estimate is made so when we began with the indo german watershed development program We, st- we were using at that time what is called standard techniques so what we we would describe as gross planning techniques we would go to an area and then using a dumpy level or a theodolite and other surveying instruments we would define the amount of area and uh, using standard techniques as well as benchmarks we would do both a resource inventory as well as an ana- an-, an analysis of the entire area we would do a contour map and uh, together with that generate a whole project proposal now while this looked very impressive we discovered that when it came to implementation first the contour map was of absolutely no value secondly we found that what was planned for and budgeted for very often resulted in either over exaggeration of what had to be done or simplification of what needed to be done so our estimates both in terms of activities as well as in financial terms were often way off the mark either under budgeted for or over budgeted for thirdly what used to happen is once we went into the field with this project document which was sanctioned for implementation the villagers on whose lands this activity was to be undertaken neither knew what was in that proposal nor often agreed with what we proposed and so there was tremendous conflicts because when you went to implement a particular activity on a farmer's field he would object to it or if he if he was forced to accept it well he was absolutely uninterested in what was going on and was not interested in its maintenance or continuity it became an activity that was implemented by the project implementing agency rather than by the villagers or farmers themselves who were actually from our perspective the main actors in a participatory watershed development project so this entire gross planning methodology that we were adopting at that time which was standard and current in terms of um, scientific practice we found of very little relevance in terms of both what needed to be done how it had to be done and in terms of its acceptance by the very people for whom it was meant to be so we decided to to change our approach and adopt a method that would make the land owners or the villages the center of the planning and implementation process pnp is a tool designed to actively include the farmer household in the planning of the required treatments specific to their plot of land It is sensitive to the concerns and interests of the respective farmer household while designing the treatment of their land the micro unit which has both spatial and social dimensions
The team that undertakes PNP consists of a technical expert or a person experienced in the field of watershed development and a minimum of two to three members of the village watershed committee. This team guides and motivates the farmer for the land treatments proposed. The respective plot is studied in detail and the plan is discussed with the owner household. The slope of the land is then measured. Soil depth taken using an auger or digging instrument and soil texture and erosion status of the field observed. Depending on these, the land is then classified. All details of the land are explained to the owners. The farmer household whose land is to be surveyed and planned for should be present on the site. The landowners are put at ease while the team informally discusses with them the details of the land. Once the land is classified, the most suitable land use and treatments are proposed to the owners. It does often happen that the farmer is completely unwilling to accept the suggestions given. The team tries to convince the owners by explaining the reasons for every proposal. The owner's point of view is also considered. If the reasons are genuine, then the next best options are sought, while taking note of their opinions and preferences. Involving people in net planning is a challenge in itself. A question often asked is, is it really necessary to involve the women? Can the menfolk not give us the perspectives of the family? I would really like to say that there are certain obviouses that are often overlooked. The first obvious, are women not farmers also as the men? We often overlook this. The second point is, when one looks at the land, we assume that there is one way in which the land can be planned. What we often forget is that that same piece of land is viewed differently by the men and by women. PNP is not meant to be a process just to arrive at a technically sound plan that is suited to circumstances but a process that results in a consensus of what has to be done, how it is to be done, and why it is to be done the way it is to be done. So the net outcome of the participatory net planning methodology is to arrive at site-appropriate measures which are owned by all the parties concerned, in particular the land-owning family, because at the end of the day, it is their land, they will pay or bear the consequences of what, have been, what has been done on their land or the benefits thereof and it will be up to them to maintain the structures and activities that have been implemented on their land. So PNP finally is not only a technical process but particularly and more so a process of learning, of, of understanding and of stake building. It is a process for building consensus about a particular course of action and its expected outcomes. Participatory net planning is supposed to be a dialogical process which is oriented towards enhancing understanding and learnings on the part of all the parties concerned, the landowner and his family, the technical agency, as well as the other villagers who are involved in the project. Women members of the household are also included in the discussions. Hence, their opinions and requests are also considered. Watershed development meets the basic needs that women have in addressing their household chores. Watershed development addresses the need of fuel, food, water, fodder and others. If we want the watersheds that are developed to be sustained and to give their results long past the treatment time, then these needs of women have to be addressed and women have to be involved in the entire designing and planning. Watershed development and the participatory net planning has an important role for both men and women. The same piece of land is viewed differently by the men and by women. 
When a man sees his land, the first question he asks is, what cash can this land bring me? When the women view their land, their question is, how can this land address the needs of my family? I need food security, I need water, I need fuel, I need fodder. What can I do with my land? What can I contribute in the designing so that my land can address these needs? Hence, it is important that we have both men and women participating together in net planning. In this way, we can be sure that the lands that are treated will be protected and sustained and will give them the returns for a long time to come. During this process, the team helps the farmer household visualize how the treatments would help solve the existing problems on their land, the transformation that will take place once the treatments are implemented and the benefits that can be obtained. This visualization is effective when the household is present on site. Once a consensus has been arrived at regarding the proposed treatments and land use, all the information is noted in the net planning format. This includes details of the present and the proposed treatment. At the end of the exercise, the head of the farmer household is given a sheet of paper which contains a diagram of his land on which the details are indicated. Together with the owners, an agreement is signed which formalizes the consent of both husband and wife to undertake and maintain the proposed treatments. PNP is a participatory and socially oriented approach which maintains technical standards. In PNP, local knowledge and indigenous practices are given due consideration and where appropriate, they are incorporated. The farmer household knows the details of their plot of land. The budget is estimated and realistic costs are factored in for every plot of land. This cost then becomes a part of the budget for the total program. Participatory net planning or PNP or net planning as it is popularly called or known as uh, has been widely adopted at the national level and also at, at the state level. Uh, the common approach to watershed development guidelines of the Government of India which govern projects funded by the Government of India such as the National Watershed Development Program uh, makes reference to the PNP method of developed by water. The Indo-German Watershed Development Program in both uh, uh, Maharashtra as well as Andhra Pradesh uses the net planning methodology. The drought prone area program being implemented in Maharashtra as well as the integrated wasteland development program also in Maharashtra is actually following the net planning method for development of project proposals, implementation as well as for purposes of monitoring. Uh, the Andhra Pradesh Rural Livelihood Program being implemented in Andhra Pradesh by the government of Andhra Pradesh supported by the Department for International Development, DFID, also has, is following the net planning methodology that has been developed by water. And uh, there is also and also many NGOs in various states of the country who have been trained in this method by water are adopting this widely in all their projects. The reason why participatory net planning has been so widely adopted and used is that it is simple, it can be easily understood and it resonates with the farmers and with various project implementing agencies, with people who have a minimum technical background because it results in outcomes which are site-specific, accurate, optimal and therefore effective and sustainable.